We're currently using a flat list component to render a very simple array of data, just of a few objects with keys on them. And by default, that's giving us this very basic list view. And to change this into a grid view, what we're going to want to do is on the flat list, we're going to use the num columns prop. And then we'll tell it the number of columns that we actually want to render. And this gets us most of the way. We've got three rows of data set up the way we want it to. But the final row of data is taking up the full width, whereas we want it to only take up the equivalent of a third of the screen. And to fix this, we're going to set up a new function called format data, which is going to take the data array as well as the number of columns that we intend to render. Inside of format data, the first thing we're going to do is determine the number of full rows that our data set has. And to do that, we'll say math.floor, and then inside of this math.floor, we'll say data.length divided by the number of columns that we intend to render. Then using the number of full rows, we can determine the number of elements that actually exist in the last row. And to do that, we'll say data.length minus the number of full rows times the number of columns we intend to render. We'll then set up a while loop, and while the number of elements in the last row does not equal the number of columns we intend to render, we're going to add to the data array, and we'll push onto that an object with a key, as well as empty true, so that we can render it differently. Finally, we'll go ahead and increase the number of elements in the last row. And you can see here that we're now backfilling the information. We've got these blank columns added in here. But one issue with our current logic is if I have four full rows of data, we're then going to add in a completely unnecessary fifth row. And to alleviate that issue, we're going to add another condition into our while loop where we'll say, while the number of elements in the last row does not equal zero, which then doesn't render any additional information. The final thing we'll do is actually not render these blank elements. So going down into our styles, we'll add a new style in here called item invisible. And this item invisible is going to have a background color of transparent. Now, if we look inside of our render item, we'll say if the item dot empty is equal to true, we'll go ahead and return a new view with a style equal to styles dot item as well as styles dot item invisible. And this leaves us with three full rows of data and then a fourth row with just a single element and our two empty data elements that we're using to ensure that the height and width and padding is all laid out correctly are not visible.